Now we're going to investigate the idea of the intersection between two different sets. And now instead of it being my property having a disjunctive, it has a conjunctive here. It is an and statement. You can remember this by the similarity between the intersection which faces down and the and symbol which looks a little bit like an A. So the intersection is going to have the X and A and the X and B. So I can visualize that in the following way. So let me put up a, an A and a B here, and I'm, in this case, going to have them being overlapping, so there's something interesting. If I want to say that X is in both A and B, then the intersections that, that bit in the middle here, this, this portion that's sort of overlapping the, the shaded region in the middle where they are both in the A and the B, that's the idea of an intersection. If the A and the B, by the way, were completely separate, there wasn't any overlaps, then the intersection would be the empty set because there's no element that's going to be in both of them. So let's see an example of this. Again, I'm going to have an A and a B. And notice I've changed the A and the B on you again. The A is going to be n equal to 2p. So this is going to be all of the even integers. The B, however, is equal to n equal to 3q. And this is going to represent all multiples of q. So then if I want to write it down, I can do the same trick where I'm going to highlight the integers that are relevant here. I'm going to highlight, in the case of a, all of the even integers, 0, 2, 4, and so on. And in the case of b, I've highlighted in yellow all of the multiples of 3, 0, 3, 6, 9, 12, and so on. So then the intersection are the things that are in both the A and the B. So let's think about how that works. Okay, the zero is in both of them, so that should count. The, the highlighted two here is only in A, the highlighted three here is only in B, the highlighted four here is only in A, but then the six is highlighted in both of them. So this looks like the multiples of six, and indeed that's what A intersect B is going to be. It's going to be the zero, the six, the 12, all of the multiples of six. That's what it means to be both a multiple of two and a multiple of three. So now if we're going to formally prove this, then I'm going to do the same trick as before. I'm claiming that this is going to equal all of the multiples of six. So I'm claiming an equality. So that means that I want to show if I've got something in the one, it's in the other, and if I've got something in the other, it's in the one. I want to be able to show both directions. So the proof that I'm going to do is going to have biconditionals, uh, logical implications that work both ways at every single step. That tells me if I start in the intersection, I'm in the multiples of six, and if I'm in the multiples of six, I'm going to end up in intersection. So let's start in the intersection, just doesn't really matter, we got to start somewhere. So I'm going to begin with let my n be an element of a intersect b. So that's my starting assumption. And then, as we know, our next step is always applying definitions. So if n is in a intersect b, then it means it's, it's both in a and in b, but that means that it's a multiple of two and it's a multiple of three. So this is going to be the same thing as saying that n is equal to 2p, and then this is also equal to 3q, where the p and the q are inside of the integers. Now, if I focus on the n equal to 2p portion of this equation, notice that we're saying that if n is going to be a multiple of 3, then, then 2p is going to be a multiple of 3. But clearly 2 isn't a multiple of 3, that's nonsense. So in this formula that the 2p is a multiple of 3, it has to be that the p is a multiple of 3. So in other words, this is the same thing as saying that this n here can be written in the following way. It's the 2, and I'm taking this 2 here, but then the p itself is some multiple of 3. So this is going to be 2 times 3, and then I've used up a p and a q, so I may as well put an r here, where r is going to be inside of the integers. So indeed, if n is equal to 2 times 3 times r, you can split it up into these two cases. And if you have it split up, you can put it together like this. So this is an if and only if. 
This is the same thing, of course, as coming and saying that n is equal to 6 times r for r inside of the integers. And I am therefore going to finish with the following. I have to give a name for my set. I'm trying to say that what this equal to is the set of multiples of 6. So I'm going to say that n here is an element of the set of all integers, x inside of the integers, where my x is equal to 6 times r for r inside of the integers. And so indeed what I have shown is that a intersect b is equivalent to this particular set down here, the multiples of 6.